Welcome back everyone, today we've got a frankly ridiculous situation, right? Kerbal Space Program 2 right now is on sale for 20% off as part of the Steam Summer Sale. Thing is though, there isn't a developer for the game. Yeah, Take-Two are literally selling this game currently in early access even though they just closed down the development studio. They have given people no further plan for development. They've actually just had a wall of silence around this entire thing. Straight up, they have not actually admitted the closure of the studio. The whole thing is weird. It's a mess. New players are being charged $39.99 for an early access game that does not have a development team. That's wild. So today, I'll walk you through this absurd situation and how one of the largest companies in the gaming industry seems to just be fine doing this. And of course, not only this, also the entire development process, story, and launch of Kerbal Space Program 2, because that was also awful, and turns out we're going to learn a little bit more about that today. So to me, this is just treating customers with contempt, especially when you think about the people who have not been told about what's going on, who they want to spend 40 bucks on the game. People deserve to know, you can help people know and help us out with only two mouse clicks, liking this video and subscribing to the channel. That essentially gives the algorithm a positive signal. That means it's more likely that our content will get out there. The further videos go, the more resources we have to do a better job for you. Okay, let's talk about it then. One week ago, Intercept Games was closed down. Now, we know this because of WARN, which stands for Worker Adjustment and Retraining, uh, something like that. Basically, right, if there are going to be layoffs, at least seemingly within Seattle, then there is going to be a WARN post about that. Those actually go up requiring 60 days of notice to staff. So it's a policy that exists to help staff not be completely rug pulled by their companies so that if they are going to lose their job, at least they can try to line something up. So because of that, we basically know what location and what company the job cuts are from. Now, it's not granular, it's still listed as take two, but it is take two, 70 jobs, permanent closure. The next way that we know, of course, is just staff confirming all of this on LinkedIn, right? Because the studio was completely shut down at the start of July, and that means that the whole process seems to have taken a week. So that's the weird situation that we're in. The developer for KSP2 has officially been closed, staff are not working the game anymore, and Take Two, who owned their publisher, Private Division, basically a sub-label of Take Two, so they've not actually admitted that. It's really strange. They have been adamant that somebody will be working in Kerbal Space Program 2. They did an interview with Game Developer where they basically said that Private Division, as a publisher, would provide updates for the game. Thing is, they didn't really say how. They didn't even say, like, what category of solution uh, will, will there be for this problem? And funnily enough, they managed to say all of that without actually admitting that the game developer, uh, Intercept, that, uh, that they had been closed. So it is very strange. Now, even though Take-Two are saying Private Division will keep the game developed, uh, somehow, you know, no plan, no admission, even though they're saying that, we also know that Private Division themselves are facing layoffs, right? So they're facing layoffs, and also per IGN's reporting, they are in the midst of potential sale options. One for the Kerbal Space Program IP, because they own that, and the other one, just them as a publisher, right? The whole thing Private Division going which obviously does not bode well for active development in the short term. That means that if you bought this game, you're playing in early access, you probably should be concerned. Because so far, it seems like the sort of decision-making that got us into this mess is the kind of decision-making that'll continue. IGN sources talked a little bit about uh, essentially what things were like at Private Division, so I'm going to quote from their article. Sources say the label was often saddled with unreasonable sales targets and pressure to release games before they were ready, with Kerbal Space Program 2 being a notable recent example. Yes, again, that is stupid, that is self-defeating, but it also is something that continually happens in the industry. For a lot of the people who are making the biggest decisions, they are often concerned about quarterly results, yearly results, that kind of thing. They're not always going to be thinking about the two-year, five-year, or ten-year term. And to most of us, that's fairly insane. I mean, you'd probably say, well, if you're, if you're an investor, if you maybe have shares of a company, surely the whole point is you believe that that company is strong and a good place to put your money in, so if they do the right thing for the long term instead of the money-quick-now thing, I mean, surely that's good. Surely you should put your money in there. And there are plenty of cases where that kind of thing does actually work out. But a lot of the time, it's almost, to me, a bit like an opportunity cost thing. If your money is sitting in a certain company and, you know, it might have a good five-year plan, but then there might be another company 
that uh, maybe is looking a little bit more bullish in the short term. So there is a sort of expected cost in being in the short term, lower performing asset. I, I think that's some of the thought pattern that drives this stuff anyway, or at the very least that helps explain something that to the rest of us seems bloody stupid. Now, the live development of this game did see an update on the 11th of June. This was after staff had been informed of the layoffs, but it was before the studio closed. And it's kind of tragic because this patch was relatively small. It was fixing user experience and bug issues. Thing is, though, they promised this on April 25th as the precursor to the Colonies update. The Colonies update is the big thing that the majority of the game team was building. Of course, four days after that promise was made to the players, the war notice was filed. So that is absolutely brutal. They communicated with their players that they were going to do an immediate patch and that they were building up to a larger content release. Four days later, they find out they're all losing their jobs, essentially. That means that, yes, right now there is no developer, but the publisher are not necessarily in a position to build a new team. If this was something where they could just do a press release and put everybody's fears to rest, they probably would have, so why have they not? I mean, they're trying to sell the intellectual property, and Take-Two are also trying to sell them. So this is absolutely an uphill battle, and of course it's made all the more rough by Steam Early Access. Ostensibly, when you buy the game, you are basically supporting the development. Now, those sales may be a little tricky. I mean, Kerbal Space Program, very strong IP. Yes, lots of people play it. Problem is, though, it's absolutely been through the ringer. It is not in a good state. So if you're a developer, right? Uh, you know, maybe developer, developer, publisher, whatever. If you buy Kerbal Space Program 2 to go and finish the game, you're basically buying a game that the community is furious about in the hopes that somehow, if you throw more money into a situation that already wasn't going well, that it somehow would turn around and be good. Now, I do think there is a way to do that. If you basically say, we have acquired this, it's going to take us a little bit of time, but we have the will and we have the resources, we're going to do this right. That could actually work, but it would rely on them actually convincing people that the fundamentals have changed. So it still is a relatively risky sort of thing to go and buy Kerbal Space Program VIP. Now, of course, there's also the Colonies update. Who the hell knows what's going to go on there? Because if it was to be finished by another developer, well, that would still take time. It wouldn't be ideal. Number one, a design would be finished by people who didn't start it. And that means that there's going to be a whole bunch of onboarding time, not only to, uh, to their tools, to their code base, but also basically understanding the design principles. When you're developing a game, especially a live one like that, you're always generating hypothesis and uh, you know, you're, you're seeing how that shakes out. Those are important lessons. Thing is though, they're sort of soft lessons. They're not necessarily a game feature. They're not necessarily a piece of code. They are a sort of intangible asset that is in the brains of the developers. The sort of thing that makes them do a polished experience that the players really truly want. That is going to be the casualty here. Of course, when we go and look at Steam, we do see a big old uh, wave of, uh, you know, of negativity, which is completely goddamn justified. And it's gotten so bad that content creators around Kerbal Space Program are basically looking at KSB2 and they're wondering what's even the point of doing coverage. Because basically, the core game is so unfinished. I mean, look, we've talked about City Skylines 2 here. It does very much appear that this is a worse situation than CS2. Now, another side of this is Steam Early Access. How can a game be on Steam Early Access when there seemingly isn't a developer behind it? That is a very strange thing. And I've got to imagine that it would go down differently in a case like this, where it's big IP, big game, sort of all, you know, known stuff, or maybe a single developer that's basically just scarpered off. I've got to imagine that where the single dev would probably be booted off Steam because the rules being broken, away you go, and then in a case like this, it's probably a little bit more tricky for Valve. So in terms of some facts, nobody at any point has updated the store page with any like status for the game. The social media accounts have got no information on the development situation surrounding the game. So it's selling into early access. We factually know that the material circumstances of its early access development have changed and no formal update has been made there. Now, we do know that it's possible for sales to be suspended on Steam without removing access for existing players. So Steam could effectively do a delist to stop this game from being 
being sold because yes, Take-Two are selling a game that nobody is actually working on. Now, Steam's guidance here is that customers only purchase a game on early access if they're happy with the game at the time of purchase. That, of course, makes a lot of sense because basically the more like liability Valve would have here, well, the more drama there could be, the more expensive that could get for Valve, so it does make sense to just throw that on the player. Thing is, though, there is also the requirement from developers to genuinely believe that they are going to finish the game. That is a requirement, and this is not some five-person indie team who got way in over their heads. This is Take-Two Interactive throwing up a wall of silence and encouraging people to buy a game that nobody is working on. That, to me, does feel like something Valve should probably be talking to them about. In fact, if I was betting, I would say there's probably some sort of conversation going on. Now, one thing that is real weird is the closest that we've got to actual information. So this comes from the forum moderation team. Now, those are actually not private division staff. They've basically done a post saying that they'll do as much as they can. It's really weird. I'll just, I'll read it out for you. Folks, we're in a very unsettled transitional situation. An unsettled transitional situation. That definitely sounds grim. Most or perhaps all of our parent company's staff have been laid off. We do not know what the new management's intentions are for the game or for the forum. We're trying to find that out, but so far without success. You should probably prepare yourselves for the possibility the forum could be shut down at any time, possibly without warning, until we hear one way or another. It's our intention to go on moderating as we have been doing under the same rules. We wish we had better news, and they basically say, that's all that we know. So they said that some people got a little extra spooked, so they did do a follow-up post saying to emphasize that they're not saying the forum will be shut down. They're essentially saying it could be shut down because they don't really know what's going on. They point out that loads of games have forums that continue long after the game is done, and if nothing else, KSP1 is still something that people are buying and playing, so its forum uh, may continue to be sorted, and they basically say that they themselves are in a vacuum of information. So the unspoken warning here is that that the Kerbal Space Program forums, which contain years of advice for modding on, say, KSP1, as well as records for the community, that that is at risk right? And the moderators basically want to ensure that people have got a chance to back the whole thing up. Usually when a team says that, their actual intent is for people to start doing archival work so that important stuff isn't lost. And in a franchise like KSP, that's extremely important because you're talking about complex builds and people putting in a hell of a lot of work. I mean, you know, classic old school games facts, just Giga posts that are full of amazing info, which is the opposite of what Take Two have been providing because we have no info from them. As a public, we can look at Warren, we can look at LinkedIn, we can look at forums, we can see the actual people impacted by this decision talking about them no longer working at the company and not working in the game, but the people who actually ordered that decision, even though we've known about this for like 60 days, right, over 60 days now. They have not acknowledged any of it, and that is the thing that to me is the most absolutely insane. I suppose for them, it's business as usual. KSP is an asset, KSP2 is an asset, it should be on Steam, getting them sales. Again, apparently, regardless of what the experience is going to be for their potential new customers, and that is not how you should be treating customers. So this is honestly a disgraceful situation. Everything that led into KSP2 does seem to have been, uh, I mean, a total mess. The last time I talked about the KSP situation, we went into that story, so I won't do it here. You can check out that video instead. I mean, it's not happening to the biggest game franchise in the world, but I think it actually matters more when it's happening to these niche, uh, niche franchises because they're often sometimes the only thing that are scratching that itch for players. So whenever they go down and have existential problems, it has a disproportional impact on people's, uh, really in people's hobby time, because there is not always readily another game that is competing for the same slice of the market. That's why I think that matters. So let me know what you think. Have you been impacted by KSP? Do let me know. I will be back tomorrow. So thanks for hanging out. I'll see you then.